Alright, hello everyone, this is Bishu from Houston Outlaws, and welcome to another episode of HEV After The Match. And let's, we're gonna, obviously you guys can see we've all uh, revamped our studio a little bit, looks very nice, thank you Ryan. It'll be, now, now it'll be more of like a, like a podcast type deal, it's, it'll be a little bit more casual, and then we'll be able to bounce off each other a lot better, and, and at, you know, most importantly, it won't, it won't just seem like a Zoom call, so. Alright, before we get to it, let me just introduce everyone, just so everyone's aware again. Alright, we got Junk, our head coach. We got Jake, our coach, and we got Lep, our newest addition, and we all, of course, we want to feature him in our in our video. This is Lep. Say hi. Hello, my name is Lep. Ah, yes, very, very <laughs> good, very good. All right, let's get, let's jump, just let's uh, get this question started then. Okay, so Krong asked, "What is everyone's thoughts on finally being able to overcome the gladiators?" Yeah, I, I mean, I guess so. What do you think, Jake? Uh, it's nice, you know, to get a win against them. I think it's something we needed to do as a team because we had, like, struggled against them so badly in, in the past. So to get a win shows that, like, we can win and we'll inevitably meet them more going into, like, playoffs and things like that. So it's, like, a really important for our team to, like, believe that we can win and, and prove to ourselves that we can win against them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What do you think, Jung? Any, any thoughts? Hey, we, all we needed was left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what do you think, Lev? How do you, how'd you feel about the match? Um... You know, it was pretty easy. Uh, I showed up into the match, you know, first two first two maps, you know, some light work. We get into the, the next couple of maps and, you know, it starts to look a little shaky, you know, the Houston Bowl. But then we you know we get to the final map and then I'm just like having my way with Frill and having my way with Glads. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just becomes light work after that, you know. Yeah, love to see it. Love yeah. to see it. Just another day at office. Glad, yeah. uh, no problem. It's another day at practice, you know. That's all it is. All right, next question is, is there a possibility we see Doge come back in the stage or are we planning to use him next stage after the Junker Queen nurse? Hmm, that, obviously, what, when did it, what did Aaron, Aaron Keller say about the- It'll be like after the stage. It'll like be this, after the stage? this stage will be on the patch we're on and then after the stage, there'll be some patch to nerf Junker Queen. Mm -hmm. So or, this stage is just Probably like more. more. So, yeah. but yeah, this, but I think, I mean, uh, as a team, we could, we can use Doge, we can use Dante. It's like, they're both really good players. Like they're both really good at the game and can play a lot of heroes. So yeah, those, those like might we can we can again. yeah we can still use both of them in the tank role. Like for yeah. us, we don't see it as like yeah. committing. Just yeah, so, so whoever plays better in scrims will play. Yeah. Uh, and what are the plans for the support line rotations? Will that permanently play main support? Will Lastro still play it at times? Is Iris still the primary flex support? Question mark. That everything everything just depends on the meta and the scrims. So uh, it's just you never know. Mm -hmm. Who will play? It'll just depend. Yeah, it'll depend on like what heroes we need to use, what swaps they might have to do, what responsibilities they have as far as calling. It's like all flexible yeah. and it's what just, happens in the scrims. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like yeah, each yeah. individual player's like preferences and comfort on certain heroes. So that's one of those things that's like always in flux. And because we don't know what the meta will be, there's no way for us to know. Um, but this stage since it's like seems like really stable with Brig Lucio, we'll probably just um, not change much, but you know, it could always change over time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I mean, I think like anyone can see right now, like unless something like crazy, somebody, somebody finds something like that no one thought of, like it's the meta's probably set. So like, I don't think anything's gonna change that much. All right, next question. How do you guys get back to a place where you can play at the level you have previously after losing a central team figure like Piggy? What do you think, Junk? Yeah, Piggy was like a very important piece for us, but just going forward, um, we can have other people fill in that hole as well, and then possibly fill in the uh, other holes that, that uh, our team was missing. So um, going forward, we'll, we'll keep trying hard and see, and hopefully we achieve better results. Mm -hmm. All right, now that's pretty much it for the questions, but now that we have to get, now that, now that we have the setup, we can just like talk about some other, uh, 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 random things too. So, 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 John, what, what has it been like to have a team with three rookies this season? No, we had more rookies last year too. So yeah. I think rookies is a, what was it? Just like a normal part of the each year. Um, so yeah, nothing new. I, it's, it's good that they're, they were able to perform really well in their matches so far. So I'm looking forward to them. Yeah, I mean, Jake and I have obviously been a player too, but I think, and like even Jake's getting old now, but um, I think I think something that great, something that's great that rookies often like uh, bring to the team is 
how much how much like passion and how like how much like they're willing to like just work for it and left certainly left, left certainly i showed that so. left has one of the most passion i ever seen yeah, <laughs> yeah seriously the team, i remember so. i remember last row on the first day he like he like he like messaged me on discord saying hey fishu i think i've never seen an na player that is like that is like left before i've never i've never seen i've never had a single player come to me to ask for a vod review this is the first for me and i've been doing this for a while and that like pretty much like sums everything up like left is like super motivated he like will like you know be on our our, our teammates ass about like like we gotta do a vod review like just like talk about the game it's great i, I love it Hey, Bishu, you just called out on NA players. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how does it feel for you? Like, no, how do you feel? How do you feel being a rookie? Yeah. Uh, I mean, like I said before, I kind of touched on it. It's just some light work. <laughs> I was doing it in contenders. I was getting, I was rallying my team together because, you know, I'm freshman contenders. I, I built my team. Me and IC, we built a team and we set a certain standard for what we want to accomplish and what, like, we're, we held our teammates to a higher standard. So just going from tier two to tier one, I mean, it wasn't that big of a jump, citizens, other than like being relocated and like playing with the team. So I think like uh, as far as the expectations, like I still want to make sure that we're all going to be on the same page. The level of communication is going to be there. The level of consistency needs to be there. And it's like, uh, I don't know, like that's that's partially why the reason why I wasn't so nervous going to a lot of the trials and like into, into any of the blocks, right? I mean, I just treated it as what it was. It's just another block. We're going to go in. We're going to do these things. We're gonna accomplish these things, and then afterwards, if I, if I feel like I need to communicate something, like say Lastro is like could be doing something better on Brig, I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna go talk to him, right? I do the same thing for everybody on the team, and I've been doing that for well since I've been in tier two. It's just like the the bare minimum, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely something we noticed as far as like the tryout process. Like you were the one who was like most confident of all the players we tried out, like most confident about making your own calls and like having your own vision of how you want to play. So. I think that's something that's really important even as a rookie to have like even though you're not as sure of it yet because you still have like a lot to learn and like improve and understanding but in the end you still have like a vision you're willing to put yourself out there and like put your ideas out there which i think is really important to like have that someone starting the discussion having the energy there like all those things like really do count you know despite being a rookie it's like it is valuable yeah yeah love to see it and hmm yeah, so okay, it was recently announced that Jungle Queen will be nerfed. We talked about it a little bit. Uh, what are what are your what is everyone's opinions though on like which part of her kit should or would be nerfed to like help her stay more balanced? I think we all have like a pretty good idea on what needs to be nerfed. Like I'm, I'm pretty sure on like we can on one we can just say like what's going right, to be nerfed. Three, right? two, one, shout! Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah, like. Yeah. Like so, it's like it's like so game breaking it's almost. A, it's it's like, really it changes broken everything. Skill having like the AOE speed, the HP is pretty relevant, but I think the speed is like really crazy. Like yeah, yeah, but having both like, of them in one kit. That's yeah, like, yeah. Relatively, and, like, and the fact you have like cool Lucio though. and Junker Queen. So if someone were to play a comp without those two heroes, you would be like literally twice as fast as they are. Yeah, that's like yeah. very crazy. And FP, I always say like FPS games. The movement speed is like a really broken stat because yeah, so much, it provides so much. It just like, means you values. like you like don't take damage that you would have taken yeah. because you're moving so fast. People like miss you, right? Mm -hmm, they mm -hmm. like miss shots on you. Especially on characters like Genji, that's gonna be like they, yeah. their their effective HP is like so much higher because yeah, of the speed. they can like do so many more like little tricky plays and and be so much harder to deal with, and then it just gets really overwhelming for the other team really fast. So I hope they tone down. Especially the movement speed, but also the sh just everything about the shift could be nerfed, honestly. And yeah, I think I the wonder... hero could still be good. Like as a base hero, her life steals good, her pulls good, her ult's good. But the shift is the thing that makes this meta like one trick viable. Yeah, like don't yeah. switch your heroes ever. Yeah. I'm wondering if uh, if they do nerf her shift, will they bring back some of the DPS passive speed? I really don't think because so. that was something that they took away yeah. right whenever Junker Queen came out. So I wonder yeah. if they like say they would do something like give it the baptiste lamp treatment where they just like increase the the cooldown time to like 30 seconds or like something insane you know yeah like would they bring back a little bit more of the passive even uh, if it's like five percent how i see the the patch is i do think the i think it's a good direction though right yeah uh, what, what we're doing with the game mm -hmm. it's like rather than make the game being about the all, all of our shields and stuff it's just that i think i think the jungle queen is strong, but then if she becomes weak, then I think it's other issues, the same issues comes up again. That's mm -hmm. how I see it. 
Just I, I think giant fairy. I think the number is just a little, a little too high, right? Like normally you'd have, and then there's also things like the Doomfist being nerfed, where he doesn't have the AOE slow anymore. Where mm -hmm. that probably would have been really useful against the Junker Queen comp because getting a huge slow on the whole team would like hurt them a lot because yeah. they need to catch up to you. But so I think like part of the thing is like the the other heroes like Ball and Doom. I think like would have been the most viable heroes against Junker Queen. Ball just doesn't quite work well enough, and then Doom is like. Yeah, Doom's just a really it's bad hero now, so player, yeah. I think maybe if they were to like buff Doom or like other heroes that like could compete with her, like heroes that play like Junker Queen, like Azaria or something like that, you could buff her and make her a stronger pick in a similar comp. But in the end, the sh no, to no, me, the shot not sorry. Yeah. Uh, all, the, all the shields has to be nerfed. All the shields has to be nerfed. I don't. Yeah, the no, shield no, buff Zarya is what I said. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so yeah no, no, but but then, but then uh, she's, okay, she's okay. a shield hero. I don't. I, I think true. shield hero is the issue with the Overwatch. I think that's why mm. Ball Doom and Junker King is on the right direction on how the game should be. But then if you just if the shield is too strong, then at, at the end of the day, the tank player is playing for your team, and that's a boring role again, mm -hmm. and it's just gonna keep. Repeating Need the more, more selfish value for tank, like more yeah. individual value, and I think, like you said, I mean, you don't have to delete the shields, right? You just like tone it, you buff. No, the, I don't think they focus. should. <laughs> we work the kit, get rid yeah. of all the shields in the game, and give them something else. Ah, that could be That's interesting. interesting. You know, that would be like, very interesting. Like heroes like Reinhardt or something could like. You okay, could Reinhardt about, can be the one. <laughs> yeah. like, at least he can. At least he has to be every, with his yeah, shield. Yeah, every other hero can shoot while they have the shield up. Yeah, yeah. yeah Ryan yeah, is yeah, yeah. the only one who can't. He has to choose between shield and shooting. So make it more punishing to like be be able to in order to utilize the shield. Something has to. Yeah, you don't don't you can't attack. Be a yeah. it's, like, it's so it's so bad. Yeah, like, yeah. Heroes like Sigma and Winston, Zarya, they can like do everything all at once. And yeah, that's yeah, a, yeah. And in a way, Junker Queen does the same, right? Her shield's just like a health bar shield on everybody. Yeah. Yeah. But in a way, that's part of her problem too. Is that she yeah. presses the shift and then everyone keeps fighting. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. so make her make stall. her strong individually and get rid of what you're doing for the team. Right. I right. do think the AOE stacking abilities are like always like very dangerous to be imbalanced yeah. like stuff like i think bap is a good example of a hero that's like dangerous for balance because like windowing your entire team to do double damage is like really crazy like your whole team does double damage now or you when you heal you heal like you know four or five you heal like two or three people at once with your just your right click heals i think yeah, like yeah. those things get really out of control and can break the game and i think that's why junker queen like the lucio brig junker queen it's like tr triple aoe's for your team mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then if you play all together then it just becomes like really overwhelming where the game is kind of balanced for people to just be doing whatever and pressing their skills by themselves the game's not really balanced for teams who are like disciplined five players get every skill that i use yeah, yeah you know yeah. i think those those things are like easy to be op and pro play so i hope they just like keep junker queen individually strong i think her playmaking is fun i think the hero has a good style but i do think it's just that aoe effect that's like a little over the top for me like yeah, yeah. As, like junk said as an individual being strong is good but having this like incredible team stem is like maybe too strong for me. Yeah, it, it definitely like I mean if you have like those kind of like three characters that are like um you know gives gives like great AOE value, like why not run that thing? Right, like, at a certain point it's a little a little too much AOE, and yeah, then it's yeah, like yeah. why don't we only run AOE heroes? Yeah. And then that's where the meta is right now. Mm -hmm. You know that's that's what happened to an extent in Go. It's like you run heroes who want to play together, and then what if you only play heroes who want to play together? Now you re that's when you get a problematic meta where yeah, it doesn't change. Yeah. But but like I said, you know, I think if they buff the other the other counter heroes like Doom and Ball, you know, even even like I think Mercy could use a buff. I think Mercy's pretty like terrible in Overwatch too, and could, yeah. probably needs a rework to be good, because the game like it's just too brutal, right? The Winston jumps on your backline, and you know yeah, whoever your other guy's just dead. <laughs> it's it's over, you know. Like Mercy just doesn't quite do enough. So I, I'd like to see more of those like greedy heroes getting more value. I like what they did the Zen, where the Zen has the boop with his yeah, melee. Yeah, now yeah. I think giving him the HP ended up being too much, right? But I think like that was a good direction for the hero where he's not just like this super fragile guy who mm -hmm. can only play with his teammates all protecting him and you can't do anything until your teammates protect you. Yeah. Like having a more individual value and strength is like, that's that's I think what makes the game fun. I think everyone can pretty much uh, agree that like Overwatch 2 is taking the right steps to like make the game more fun and exciting for everyone now. And and I'm also like excited to see Overwatch, like a Blizzard, have like more like, frequent changes too. It's like I think this is like the, we're we're definitely taking the, into like the right steps. Mm -hmm. And moving on, let's see, what do we have? What do we have, Ryan? Okay, so this this one's more of like a fun question, less game. But what's up? What's everyone's like comfort food that you will like never get tired of? Mm -hmm. Let's start with junk. 
Me? Okay. Like John not... always says the same thing as, as every time we die. Nah, everything's about okay food. with me. I'll, I'll eat anything. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll eat anything. I'm the last one, uh, last person to ask about anything food related because I'm like. Wait, the... he says that, but uh, if you guys check our uh, video with Wingstop that we did, he was like the most competitive one in that game. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, swear yeah, to God, yeah. it's because he doesn't care. He's willing yeah. to eat the hot one. Just <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Any food's okay. Yeah, any food is okay with me. So actually, everything. I, I. It's very hard for me to get sick of the food. What but. about like a food from your childhood though? Like, like, is there like, not like a food you, I know you don't hate any food, but what's uh -huh. this food you would, you like especially love? Like on your birthday, do you get a special food or? So that's know? the, that's the issue, Jake. Like, when did I ever love the food? <laughs> <laughs> All right. never started. Junk is officially no comment. Uh, <laughs> I'll go next. I'll say my, my comfort food is like uh, any like authentic Mexican food mm. is like big comfort food for me from growing up in San Diego. It's like. You know, Tex-Mex here in Texas, it's not really my speed. I can't really get behind it. I'm I'm too biased. I've had like authentic Mexican food and I can't go back because the uh, flavors yeah, are just I, so I'm gonna have unique. to like join in on this too. Texas, what's wrong? <laughs> like what happened? You guys are right next to Mexico. What, what happened? Like I was so, okay, like what? I wasn't sure about food when I first got to Texas. So I was like, oh, like Mexican food has to be great. People like talk about Tex-Mex all the time. Text next ain't it, man. It, it really isn't. And like, oh, there's like so few places, few, few Mexican places where I'm just like, ah, yes, like this is great Mexican food. I, I was just surprised. That's in the hey, way red. What's wrong with Tex Mex? <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind Tex Mex. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess so. That's a big surprise, John. Big surprise. <laughs> yeah, do you have anything? Um, yeah, I do have a comfort food, but I want to comment on you guys as Tex-Mex, you know, being a Texan. Yeah, hate it. Oh, you defending Tex-Mex. Yeah, hating right, Tex-Mex. Okay, let's okay, see. Let's see what you got. I'd like, to, I'd like to open up with, you guys just don't know the right places. <sighs> uh, you got to know the spots, all right? And the I'm, spots, when I say this, they only speak Spanish. I, and it's sure, like, whole I feel like that wouldn't be Tex-Mex. Yeah, that, that's no, but if it's, The more authentic it is, the more I like it. It's like the more, the more people... Like, the uh, more Americanized it is, the more I dislike it. Yeah, yeah, no. You don't go to those places. Yeah, right? that's, that's what I'm... That's that is... That, like, no, you're no, you're no, cherry no, picking. You're like, that you know, is the majority you know, of Tex-Mex. No, it's no, like it's like very not, Americanized, though. right? It's, it's not, though, right? Because, mm -hmm. like, these places, they're, like, very... We call them hole in the walls. Yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah, not I, the that's, norm, that's what I want. That's what that is the norm. That's, okay. that's the authentic place you have to search for. Okay, but that then, is like, the, the normal norm. place is, like, the, the, the chains and, like, the places that are, like, but all that's the over. that's not the norm. Nobody goes to those places. I, I don't know. Like We're also in Woodlands, so it's, like, very skewed, I think. That's okay, true. That's, yeah, that's true. Fair. But uh, my comfort food is uh, milanesa de pollo. It's, like, uh, it's an Argentine dish. Mm -hmm. It's, like, uh, it's breaded chicken that they smash, and it's, like, really flat. Looks like a heart. And then they fry it. Oh, like so colors, right? Chicken stick fry. Uh, chi it's it's, it's like a uh, fried? chicken fried steak, chicken fried except mm. it's more flat. And then uh, my personal favorite is they put ham and cheese inside the breading of, the, of, the, of the chicken. So you can That's cut so it up and it's got like nice melted ham and cheese. My dad's a chef, so we get to oh, make okay. yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like the most in-depth answer yeah. for yourself, <laughs> that you needed some kind of extra for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We usually have it's called milanesa de pollo, and then he he makes uh, fresh mashed potatoes, Ooh. like mashing them themselves with lots of mayo, mm. and it comes out really creamy mashed potatoes. And then we usually have like a salad, it's like a Caesar salad. Sounds good, man. That sounds really it's good. It's a whole actually. meal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I cook it for you. One of you guys. All one right. Days. I'll hold you to it. Well, like from from step one, like why not? Yeah. Okay, shit. Sure. Well, like, video about it. Yeah, I'm confident in the that kitchen. Very cool. Maybe the first besides me, too, who actually cooks occasionally. <laughs> Listen, I know how to apply heat to ingredients, okay? I, 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 it's, it doesn't involve, like... I can like... type numbers on the microwave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can apply heat to them, okay? Yeah, the oven, I can type numbers there. I can type numbers on the on the microwave. Anything with typing involved, yeah, I can Yeah, yeah, it's easy to do. I cut my hand the other week cooking. I was cooking a freaking salad, and I cut my hand. So. A salad? You cut your hand? This, is, this is how vegetables. dangerous. This is why esports players can't risk cooking, you know? Yeah, it's what too dangerous. What if you cut your fingers? GG, you're out for a week. It's too dangerous. <laughs> but um, for me, it's like almost like a cliched answer, but I, probably ramen, like like mm. Japanese ramen too. Not, I, I've, I've always like grown up with Korean ramen, but Japanese ramen always had like a special place in my heart, I think. Just because um, I, you can be... It can be so different. Like every shop has like different tasting ramen, and and I I like got like I was like so into it that when I was in Korea, I took a year off. Mm. I literally went to like twenty different ramen places in Korea just because like I had to try it. And I was a little bit surprised too, because like um out of those like twenty more than twenty actually, uh, but most of them were just like really bad. Like 
Um, but yeah, like great reviews. Maybe you're just a snob, Bijou. <laughs> uh, yeah, I will say it. I will say it all and say I am a huge snob when it comes to ramen. Because I don't think I've ever had bad ramen. I'm like, I don't There's know what's such ramen. Trash ramen everywhere. Ninety five percent of it. Like I'm just, I'm just super like ignorant about it. I, I don't know what's ramen. Like, nah, 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 nah. You, right. you are us now. Yeah, I am. Yeah, well, <laughs> maybe that's why I don't like Japanese yeah, ramen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because yeah, people are so yeah, they about are, it. They are. They are. It's like to a me, very... it's such an overrated yeah, yeah, this, food. This is. This is. I, mean, I don't think it's overrated, but <laughs> I mean, I've had really good ramen and really enjoyed yeah, ramen. It, but... It's like ramen is ramen, but I think it's so good. Like, oh, it's Russian ramen. So <laughs> they don't no, know. They don't know any better, guys. Ramen. Please, viewers, please, please. I apologize for their ignorance. <laughs> I, I can't believe I'm hearing this in front in my own team. But yeah, it's always been ramen. I've I've gone on like ramen tours and like I would like become like, like friends oh, with like the ramen, the, like the, the chefs and stuff, and I would like see what they do. I was like really into it, okay? So so it's ramen. And by the way, there's no there's no good ramen here, by the way. Just saying. <laughs> oh, and ramen. yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm glad to I'm glad I get to end this um little little video with my ramen rant. Always want to do it. And um yeah, that's it, that's it. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Thanks for watching.